Okay, here we are today. Episode three of Suzuki Samurai Diesel Repair. I'm sitting in the Samurai right now, just kind of remembering what it's like to be in here. I really miss driving it. So, welcome back to the channel. If this is the first time to the channel, please comment, like, subscribe, all that normal stuff that people say. Really need the subscribers. This video is about the leak down test, the tool that I made and what it took to bake the tool, uh, the parts that I got at, at Homes Depot. Yeah, it's it's just a quick leak down test, kind of show where the compression was leaking from because the compression test did show that it had low compression on the engine. Enjoy the video, comment about the video. I appreciate the comments that I've got on my previous videos. Uh, please, if you haven't seen episode one, check out episode one. I've also got the compression test out there, episode two. Check that out there. And I have a video coming up on an update kind of with everything torn apart already. Enjoy this video and uh, give it a thumbs up, please. Thank you. So today we're out here again with the Samurai. And what I would like to do, and I'm not really sure if it's going to if it's going to really prove anything, but what I would like to do is do a leak down test on the cylinders. The leak down test is going to show me maybe possibly if if I have uh, problems in the valves or if I'm sure that there's a leak in the, by the rings, a little blow by, uh, really the inside state of the engine. Now I'm not sure how this works will with a diesel or not, but I want to try it. And I've got a few parts that I'm going to make my leak down tester with. With that said, let's get to it. So here we are in the garage and I've got a few parts here. Picked them up at Home Depot. I got a regulator and yes, I've already opened it. I wanted to check it out. I've got a valve that I think will help me control the airflow better. I've got some 3 8 by a quarter inside diameter tubing. This is the adapter that I used to go into the injector hole and then just some miscellaneous parts. So I'll go ahead and assemble this now and see what we come up with. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start off. This is my adapter. This is from the injector and I want to extend this up a little bit. I don't want it to be too close to the injector pump and I don't want it to be right at the, the valve cover either. So I've got a 1 8 by 3 inch at nipple. Now I know somebody's going to say I should have used Teflon tape. I don't want to. I want to just keep it simple like this. The coupling. This is a quarter inch by 1 8 inch coupling. This is going to adapt, adapt it to the size I need for the hose barb to go back to the regulator. This is a quarter inch barb adapter. It'll screw in like this. This will be ready for the section of hose. We'll get a section of hose cut in a minute. Now I'll assemble the regulator side. Regulator side is going to get my adapter that goes into my compressor. And we will screw on. Now this already comes with a uh, thread sealer on it so we'll just screw this in like that and I get my other coupling this is a quarter inch coupling because I'm also adding uh, a two inch nipple on this as well because I want this the valve to extend past so here's my coupling the uh, regulator also has thread sealing on it already that's good to know. Here is the quarter, quarter inch by two inch nipple. This will give me room again for the ball valve. And again, I've already opened this. This is all stuff Home Depot Husky. I like Home Depot Husky stuff. It's pretty good stuff. So I'm gonna take this out like this. Put it over there. And this will screw on here like this. And I have another hose adapter barb. Hi, butter fingers. Hose barb. That this is a female type, where the threads are on the inside. Screw that on there. So that you hear in the background is Spike. He's a, a twenty-year-old cockatoo that just loves to sing. And we'll press this on here like this. Hose clamp. Go on there. Probably not really necessary because not using all that much pressure, but just to play it on the safe side. 
Phillips screwdriver. Let's see, we'll run this down. Let's do it this way. Use a ratchet. It's a lot easier that way. There, it doesn't take much. Very low pressure. At the other side here. Push it on. Again, tighten up the hose clamp. Okay. Hose clamps are tight. So here you have it. This is the complete thing here. So the air will come in this side. I'll be able to regulate the pressure here. Quickly control the airflow. It'll go through the hose and down into the cylinder. Just gonna cinch them up. Should probably be good enough. This bike is really being loud. All right, Ify. He's not going to demonetize because that's his own song. There, I think that worked just fine. Here we have it. We just screw the adapter on here. It should work. I can control the airflow here, going in. Regulator. I don't think I want about three to five psi. I'm not really sure. We'll check once we get to the engine how much it wants to actually hear it. So this is it. Now we just get to the engine and uh, start the install. So here leak down test. Uh, well, let's just back up. In the last video, I did a compression test. Starting with number four cylinder. Number four cylinder came up with a pressure measurement. I guess it's KSI of 350. Number three cylinder came up with 300. Number two cylinder came up with 390. And number one came again with 300. The new engine should be 495. And the allowable used engine with miles on it should be somewhere around 412. And there should be no more than, I think, 70 degree KSI difference between the cylinders. And obviously, I have more than that. So I'm assuming, or hoping rather, that it is a head gasket that's the problem. But with those kinds of numbers, there may be something else going on, like uh, bad rings that may not be sealing in the, in the cylinders properly. Uh, it could be bad valve guide or valve, valve seats or guide or something that's allowing blow by. I just don't know. So I, I'm going to do a leak down test. I'm not sure if the leak down test is going to show me exactly what I want to see or even if it's good to do on a diesel. But I'm going to give it a try. I can't do any harm to the, to the engine anymore than it already is. Well, let's get started. So I have the adapt from the compression test, and I'm going to start at number one again. I didn't record it. So we'll screw it in, get it down good and tight in there. Probably have some leak just right here on the cylinder. Now I have my gauge, which I'm hoping worked as I want it. That's my compressor here in the background, building up the air pressure. Close the valve, cleaning the stuff working. Okay, so here, ah! let you guys go here. Let's do this again. Okay, so here we have the gauge. So you got a shot in the camera, and I'm going to apply air pressure. Ooh, not a good way to measure it. I think that I would have more control. Okay, we're putting air into the cylinder. Let's see if we can hear where it's coming out. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. Obviously, the valves are open on number four. So, let me take the valve cover off. Get the valve cover off here. We'll be able to turn the engine over around to where the cylinder is closed. Obviously, the number four cylinder intake valve is open. Got a little ahead of myself about getting that ready to go. Man, I wish that compressor would turn off. There we go. Now we can hear. Also, it proves just with that test, it proved that the I was like with the Leak down tester, it actually, it actually did work. Air went into the cylinder that I was expecting. I showed it coming out from the turbine, which is where it would come out if the, if the intake valve was open. Because it would close itself first at the bottom. So I just <laughs> it did this and I did this. But hey, why not show everything that's in this? The only problem with working on leaky cars. I'm too 
I do have a little bit of leak out where it's riding in. So I'm not so worried about it. Just a little bit. Just had to get a fast injection. Now, we the air. And you're good to go. Okay, air is connected. We turn it on. Okay, we've got nothing coming off the turbo. Yeah. We'll check the coming off the other side. And we've got a <laughs> you guys. We have a big leak here. See if we can stop doing that. And then it's coming out with the turbo. And then we're coming on across the head. We'll check the exhaust here. Exhaust. Nothing coming out of the exhaust. I think we're going to do good on the leak test. So let's go ahead and crack the cylinder. So we can see if we can open number one or open the intake valve and release some of the air and we'll show it coming out of the turbo. Again, this is so hard to do with one hand. Here. Yeah. Oh my god. I didn't think that was going to happen. Turn the air off. Oh, I didn't think that would happen. Oh, no, that means I'm running under pressure. Did you catch on? That might need product it. That's good. Okay. A little bit more. Bring the intake should be open. Bring it back over here. Bring it back over here. Go open the valve. No. Interesting. Maybe that's the exhaust? I thought that was intake. No? Hmm. Ruin my theory. Let me see. Ruin my theory. Let's put you down again. Let's see, so now I've got this valve open, which I thought was the exhaust. Nope. That is definitely intake. I don't know if you can hear that air, but there is air pressure coming through the turbo. Improving my theory. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Turn the air on, we're on number one cylinder, top dead center with both valves closed. We'll turn the air on. Oh! <laughs> that was interesting. Did you see that? A pneumatic engine. Really, really interesting. I guess turn it back around and try it again. Really neat though, I like how we did that. Wish I could make it run on air all the time. A lot better I feel it. Okay, let's try that again. This time we'll crack the air a little more slowly. Nothing coming out of the turbo. 
nothing coming out of the exhaust once again so I guess this was kind of a success um, I didn't want it to show that there was a leak in the valves it may just be a head gasket I really hope so I'll go ahead and break this down turn you guys off break this down and move on to the next step all right 